Okay, so one of the oh, things. Oh, thank you, thank you. One of the things that you guys requested was uh, ECGs and heart blocks. I recommend this website very much. It's called Life in the Fast Lane, which oh, is actually yes. L I T F L Life in the Fast Lane dot com. You just type it in on Google, it comes up with everything and anything, even my cardiology uh, registrars, so they were like ST3, uh, were using this website in, in trying to help me, help teach me about ECGs when I was last year. So, okay, so what do you guys know about Outlook, anyway? First of all, so I, don't, so I don't teach you stuff you already know. Fuck all. Okay, you know nothing. Yeah. Right. What is blocked? My vision. In heart block, your vision is blocked. Okay. Yeah? Okay. No. What is blocked? Heart. The heart. Correct. So, what does an ECG show in general? The heart. The heart? So, what specifically about the heart? Rate and rhythm. Rate and rhythm, yeah. What else? What, what specifically? Like, in general, what is it? Electrocardiogram. A gram meaning a, a picture, a snapshot. It shows the electrical energy of the heart. The electrical impulse and the electrical conductivity of the heart, correct. So, when you try and see what a heart block is, a heart block necessarily, in general, is when some part of the electrical impulse is blocked. Now there's different degrees. Like, there's different degrees of um, burns, you know, first degree, second degree, third degree. There's different degrees of separation. Six degrees of separation is a good song by, by uh... Who sings it? Hall of Fame, they all sing it. The man who can't move. The script. There we go, the script, the script. I'm too old. Okay, so, what do you know about first degree? Uh, you at the back, Haroon. I don't know, mate. You don't know? Did I teach you that in Bradford? Naomi. Naomi, okay. Okay, so basically what's happening, right? Kasmir, mate, what's happening in a first degree heart block, right? I'm just going to read it off there, but I'm going to say something similar. Basically, like, it, it, it's paused. It's a delay without interruption in conduction from the atria to the ventricles, okay? So atria is the first thing, right? The first two tall top chambers, right? So, like, if it's first degree, why do you think it's first degree? If it's atria to ventricles. Top to bottom? So the first part of the heart? Correct. The first movement, when it's filling into the chambers. Correct. And there's a mnemonic for it. If the R is far from P, then you have a first degree. Okay? So, what was my, what was my little, little, little tip there? Not the arm, the R. The R wave plus P wave. <laughs> the arm. <laughs> then you have a first degree. So, as it says here, I don't know if you can see it, if the PR interval is greater than 200 milliseconds, which is five small squares, usually, that's another thing that can trick you. Sometimes you might get an ECG in an OSCE, right? Nine times out of ten, they'll give you the same speed of the tape, all right? Do you know what the speed of the tape usually is? Anyone? No. Um, um, Jess over there. No. You don't know Jess? Okay, right. No. Drew, you're not Jess, but okay, right. <laughs> Jess said no first, okay, fine. Okay, the speed of the tape is usually 25 milliseconds. Sometimes they might put 40, so you should make sure. When you're doing wiper, you wiper an ECG as well. Wash your hands. Introduce right. This is patient X, born on the 31st of March 1999, presenting with chest pain. Coming into the emergency department, an ECG was taken straight away. Uh, from this ECG, I can see that the race is regular. regular. I'm going to check that with a piece of paper now. I would like to check the intervals. The intervals are regular. The rhythm appears normal. I can see P waves X Y Z. You can just list up everything you see, right? But and don't forget to do speed of tape. They can trick you out, and it has happened before. I've done five OSCEs, one of which had a 40 millisecond speed of tape. If that is the case, then the small square will be different. But they won't be snaky like that, and it won't be too different. But yes, if you have a 25 millisecond speed of tape, you have five small squares, it's 200 milliseconds. One small square is 200 
200 over 5, which is... 40. 40. 40. Great. 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 Easy. 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 So, first degree heart block. Right. Our causes of first degree heart block. It's all up there. But can you think methodically and logically what could cause a first degree heart block? Anything? My infarction. Yes. Why? Uh, what is a myocardial infarction? It's like... It's not heart failure, it's like... Not heart failure, no. It's heart... Heart... Oh, Attack. Heart. Correct. So, if the heart's dying, yeah. there's an area of dead cells. Mm -hmm. Can electrical activity go through those dead cells? No. Block. block. No. Why does increased vagal tone cause a heart block? What is vagal tone? What is the vagus nerve? A nerve? It is a nerve. Parasympathetic. Laura. It is parasympathetic. What is parasympathetic? Is it fight or flight or rest and digest? Rest and digest. Yeah. So when you want to shit and sleep, very easy your parasympathetic. So, it slows down the heart. <laughs> myocarditis. What is myocarditis? Inflammation of the heart. Any cardiomyopathy can just cause any heart problem. But predominantly, first degrees. AV node will block in drugs. What's the AV node? Atrial ventricular node. Is it the first or the second node of the, uh, the pathway? Second. Correct. S A H P. Silly ants have ants. Sanitary atrial node. Atrial ventricular node. Bundle of this. Picking two fats. So, yeah. Such as beta blockers, which. Which beta blockers are cardio selective? The B beta 2? Or is that wrong? Oh, wrong? Beta 1. Correct. Such as? Bisoprolol. And? Metroprolol. Propranolol. Propranolol is non selective, by the way. But selective is bisoprolol. Correct. Correct. Beta 2 agonist. Is in the lungs, man. Yeah. yeah. It's how Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. That's why we're having these sessions. Nothing will be judged because I have said all sorts of things. When I was in a revision session, I once asked, "Do you smoke any alcohol?" So yeah, could just be a normal first degree heart block. They could just have a slow heart. Uh, Micro valve surgery again. You know, the blood doesn't flow from the the atrium to the ventricle. Uh, even nodal blocking drugs, electrolyte disturbance, electrolytes, electrical activity, ionic activity, and then one thing leads to another. What electrolytes are really important in the heart? Calcium. Calcium. Correct. What else? Potassium. Correct. That's it, basically, to be fair. Right, so you can see in the example, I'm not really going to go through it, but as you can see, the PR interval is greater than 30 milliseconds, so what is that? Is that, is that normal, or is that a heart block? Heart block. Why? Because it's greater than 200 milliseconds? That's what it says. Correct. All these examples. Now let's go on to second degree. Do you remember the mnemonic I gave you for the first degree heart block? Yeah, if the R wave is far from P, then it's first degree. Right. There's another part to the rhyme. Longer, longer, longer stop, then you have a venky buck. Thank you, Buck. Phenomenal. Mobitz 1, also known as Mobitz 1. Progressive prolongation of the PR interval culminating in a non conducted P wave. In simple terms, because I'm a very simple person, I'm a very simple person. Oh, I support Arsenal, so that means I'm very simple. Um, it means longer, longer, longer drop. The PR interval, yep, longer. Longer, PR is missed until the P wave is not there. Longer, longer, longer drop. Then you have a length of back. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's longest immediately before a drop beat and shortest immediately after a drop beat. So the shortest is not necessarily the starting beat, but it usually is. They're quite nice. Simple. And it's an AV block. 
AVB, AV meaning? Atrioventricular. Correct. Other features, the PP interval remains constant, so usually PR interval is different, right? But if I, sorry, right here, P, that's the same. That's the same. That's the same. And then that's fucked up. That's all fucked up then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or as Koja likes to say, mm, 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 mm. I can't do it as well as Koja. Uh, greatest increase in PR interval duration is usually typically with the first and second beats. So yeah, you can see. And then it's usually just kind of like, yeah, it just gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then, missed. Good stuff. Tends to repeat in PQRS groups, and I usually have ratios of three to two, Four to three or five to four. What does that mean? What does the ratio mean? First of all, the RR interval progressively shortens. So the RR interval usually gets shorter as well. So what does that mean? What does it mean to have ratios? What does the ratio mean? It's very simple. For You're every, not deeper. For every um, three P waves, there's two QRS complexes. Bingo. Let's move on. Bingo. Well done. Ashmeri, right? Yeah. <sighs> okay. So, mechanism of action. So, Drew, mm -hmm. what does an ECG represent again? We said it at the start. Uh, the electrical impulses within the heart. Right. So, if I'm talking about the mechanism of a, for a second degree Mobitz 1 heart block, what am I referring to? One command? Correct. But what mechanism? When I'm talking about the mechanism, I'm not asking you to explain the mechanism. What am I saying? What is wrong, basically? Something in the conduction, right? Yeah. And if it's an AV block, it's a conduction block at the level of the AV node, but you need to remember it's reversible. Okay? Mm -hmm. A reversible conduction at the level of the AV node. And malfunctioning AV nodal cells tend to progressively fatigue. So they get battered and battered and battered and battered, and then they fail to conduct an impulse. So that's why the longer, longer, longer drop. Do you see? Mm -hmm. P, P strain, P strain times two, P strain times whatever, then P is bomber clot and then it's gone to bed. Right? Um, yeah, so it's different to cells of the Hispokonji system, which usually, you know, it's like, you know, it's got all the um, conduction, like it, it kind of conducts through the network, right? Mm -hmm. So they can all pick up each other if one fails. It's different to that, it's nodal. Causes of Lenky Rock, beta blockers, what do people want to do? Block the heart, throw it down. Calcium channel blockers such as which ones are the cardio-selective calcium channel blockers? Verapamil and diltiazem. Which are rate-limiting or non-rate-limiting? Mm, Which rate, ones are you used They're rate-limiting. Correct. Yeah. Because amlodipine and nifedipine are also known as dihydrofuridines, which are used for? Vascular system. Which is, so if you're treating the vascular system, what would you be, what phenomenon, what physiological thing would you be using it for? Hypertension. Hypertension, so blood pressure. Correct. Inferior MI, again, you know, it's, it's a heart attack, it's not heart failure. Um, increased labor tone, myocarditis, cardiac surgery. Clinically significant, it's usually benign, it's usually non sinister. Lots of people have it. I remember there was a lecture that the cardiologist told us, and Manuel told us, and a lot of people told us, and I can't for a lot of me remember the statistic, but a lot of us have a nervous one. Um, Kojo and Tarnish will probably know it. Um, but yeah, a lot of us have a nervous one. Um, causing minimal hemodynamic disturbance uh, with low risk of progression uh, to a third degree, which is obviously the worst one. You know, if this is the largest, longer degree of a bad thing, a bigger degree is, a, is very bad. Um, <laughs> asymptomatic patients do not require treatment, so it's, it, you just give symptom relief. It's just your heart going a bit fluttery, and you give the symptom relief, you know, you just unflutter it. But if you don't have any fluttery symptoms, which are like, you know, systemically uh, manifest, uh, you just don't do it. Um, I don't think flutter is the right term for it because it's single atrial flutter. Uh, a bit jittery, a bit, a bit haywire, a bit wrong. If you want to, if you want to go like that. Um, symptomatic patients require atropine. What is atropine? Anyone? Anticholinergic acetylcholine blocker. Is it for bradycardia? Correct. Okay. Okay. So for atropine, 
and it's used to treat it um, symptomatically for the uh, uh, Venkibak because basically if increased vagal tone is one of the causes of the Venkibak uh, you want to block the vagus, you want to block the parasympathetic actions which are potentiated by acetylcholine, right? So acetylcholine being, you know, the, the uh, weapon of choice that the uh, vagus uses. Um, yeah, if you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, um, if the vagus is parasympathetic, parasympathetic is rest and digest, there's more resting, there's more bradycardia, so it's slow and then obviously it's more likely to cause a longer, longer, longer drop. Um, so yeah, it causes the, uh, it's used to treat the bradycardia and it can be useful in kind of resetting the heart um, in the vacuum And it's, it's, it helps regain a rhythm. And pacemaking is required very, very rarely, permanently. So, right. So, tell me about the leads. One, two, three. This is the rhythm strip. So you can see in the rhythm strip, just use the rhythm strip usually. You can see short, longer, 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 drop. Okay? This one. If some P's don't get it through, then you have a Mobitz 2. Okay? So longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a Venka Buck. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz 2. Let's go on to Mobitz 2 after this. Let's go on to Mobitz 2. So, Mobitz 2 is called a Hay Block. I didn't know that until I literally just looked at my screen just now. Uh, okay. So, uh, definition of Mobitz 2 is if some P's don't get through, then you have Mobitz 2. Oh, you were going to say it. Sorry, my bad, I stopped you. No, no, I was going to ask if there's a rhyme for this one as well. Oh, my friend, let's go back. If some P's yeah. don't get through, then you have Mobitz 2. Are you recording the screen as well, Anthony? Yeah. Can you see? Good. Good. Okay, yes. Um, so it is, I'm going to read it off the definition so I don't give you any um, misinformation. A form of secondary, second degree AV block in which there is intermittent non conducted P waves without progressive prolongation of the PI interval. So if some P's do not get through. So intermittently non conducted, some P's, so there's. Okay, right. There's a P there, right? P there, P there, missing. So some don't get through, but without progressive prolongation, but the interval is kind of the same. So if you have a look, see that interval is one square, one square, one square, and you're missing, and one square, you know what I mean? Okay? Other features? Yeah, so the PR interval remains constant. P waves march through at a constant rate. I don't know what that means, but I believe it just means the P waves are just very regular rhythm. Regular. Uh, RR interval um, is an exact multiple of the preceding RR interval. So it could be a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1. That's what they call Mobitz 2. Mobitz 2, 2 to 1, or Mobitz 2, 3 to 1. If the RR interval is twice as long as the one before, 2 to 1. If it's thrice as long as the one before, so three times as long as the one before, it's 3 to 1. If it's 15 times as long as the one before, Drew, what is it? 15 to 1. Correct. But no, that doesn't exist, your heart will be completely buggered. Mechanism of action. Mobus 2, how is it caused? Is Mobus 2 an AV block? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a functional. Um, well, it, it is, but it's not necessarily to do with the AV conduction um, so functionally being uh, wrong, right? It's nothing to do with the function of the fibers. Oh, sorry, the function of the electricity going through the AV um, bundle, so the AV node. It's more structural, the more the fibers. surrounding tissues. You know, when there's tissue damage, so the MI, MI, etc., etc., which can cause it, right? Yeah? yeah. So infarction, fibrosis, necrosis. Ah, oh, I'm just looking at it right now on the screen. So yeah, um, where is it? So yeah, I just said MI, right? So yeah, it's there. I wasn't even looking at infarction, fibrosis, necrosis, the tissue, stopping the electrical impulses going doing their thing. Uh, but yeah, it's an AV block, essentially. Um, patients typically have a pre-existing left bundle right block, which is here. Dominant S wave is in V1. Broad, notched, M-shaped R wave. So William Morrow, so it looks like a W in the V1. 
and M in the V6, that's the left arm of the branch block. That's all you kind of need to know, really. Okay? Have you got that? But yeah, that's a little bit of extra for you to help you with your ECGs. Um, yeah, yeah, typically exists with that. 75% of K patients. It's distal to the bundle of fist, no one needs to know that, but it's good to know if you're doing like an echo or an angiogram and you see where the infarct is. Um, in the remaining, no, so echo is just for uh, a left ventricular ejection fraction, my bad. Um, in the remaining 25% of cases, it's within the bundle of fist itself, narrow QRS complex. So, 25% of cases is broad QRS, 25% of cases has a narrow QRS complex, which might be useful. To say, okay, right, so they might give you a question. So, with regards to a bonus two, which of the following is incorrect? Uh, which of the following is correct? Uh, it causes a narrow, uh, incorrect, it causes a narrow QRS, it causes a broad QRS, both are correct. So, they might try and give you opposites. You know how they give you opposites? Like, I don't know, like they'll say, David is from P7 or David is from Germany, right? You know, if, if they're both from, if they're both David is from, you're likely that one of them is incorrect. But this one, both of them are correct. So, like, they might give you a question like that. If they do, then yes, it can cause either broad or narrow QRS complexes. Um, uh, it's not progressive fatigue um, of the AD nerve cells. It's an all or nothing thing. Whereas if it's just unexpected and random and it just happens on its own, it's nothing like it's progressively building up to, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired, I'm getting flooded. It's not like that, it's not the P-way doing that. It's just random, like beep, 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 yo, beep, beep. Ras flat, beat, beat, done. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Um, and there's no pattern usually, but it might be a fixed relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes. So two to one block, two to one block, R intervals or the P QRS complex, uh, the PQ intervals, the PR intervals, similar to that. Uh, yeah, but obviously if the PR intervals are the same, then the R intervals are going to be the same. So um, yeah, so like if there's, yeah, like it's two to one or three to one depending on that. Cause of members to uh, anterior MI, so anterior anterior being leads V3, V4, and maybe V1 and V2, septal and anterior septal MI, and septal infarction with necrosis. Okay, so V1 to 4 usually, infarction and uh, MI there. Idiopathic fibrosis, cardiac surgery, causing scar tissue, um, inflammation such as rheumatic fever, myocarditis, Lyme disease, autoimmune SLE, systemic sclerosis. Infiltrative myocardial disease, yeah, hyperkalemia, which is categorized by what in an ECG? How can you see my hyperkalemia? When you go camping, what do you use? If you say sleeping bag for an ECG, I'm going to kill you. Tall, tented T waves. Remember that? Tall, tented T waves. So that's hyperkalemia and then drugs obviously. The doctrine is a, obviously an anti-tachycardic. It's a, uh, something that acts on cal potassium somehow. It's very, very, it can be toxic. Right, that is your Mobitz 2 done. Then, finally, I'm going to go on to third degree, which is a complete heart block. And that's that. P's and Q's don't agree. Then you have a third degree. So you can see, look, the P is the Q's here, so that's that, that, that distance, and the P is the among this, and then it's that distance, then the P's here, there's no Q, and then there's P, and there's a Q there, it's, it's all, all over the shop, there's no real rhythm, there's no real pattern, there's no real um, following one can do of this electrocardiogram. So, third degree. Severe bradycardia due to absence of AV conduction, complete heart block. So it does literally does what it says on the tin, right? If I were to highlight complete heart block, what would spring to your mind if I said complete heart block? The heart is completely blocked. That's what I would think of. <laughs> There's no AV conduction. Ergo, it's blocked. Um, so yeah, the ECG demonstrates a complete AV dissociation. That's very important. Like you know, like if you want buzzwords, if you want the actual technical terms, AV total AV dissociation with independent atrial and ventricular rates. So, if it's independent atrial and ventricular rates, what does that mean? It means the P's and Q's don't agree. What is the P? What is the P wave indicating? 
Atrial systole. Right? Atrial systole, atrial contraction. Yeah. What is the Q wave? QRS complex. Indicated. Ventricular systole. Contraction. Correct. P's and Q's don't agree. So, ergo, there's independent atrium and ventricular rates. Man, in it. Man, how it makes sense. If you try and get the basics sorted, you will know it, you will understand it. If you try and think of the word independent atrial and ventricular rates without understanding what it bloody means, you'll get no Simplify it. Medicine is simple, but it's a lot. But if you simplify it, you'll be fine. I hate it when people used to come up to me and say, David, I don't have any worries about you. You're so clever and you're so hardworking. No, I literally sit around in my bed, in my box, of eating crisps. Literally, that's all I do all day, right? So I'm not joking when I say that. Like, I am bad at studying. I hate, I have no motivation, right? But like, in general, if you just keep on going at something, if you basic, if you simplify it, see, look, I didn't prepare this at all. I'm going, I'm learning with you guys. And then I'm just remembering, right, I've done it, I've done it for a year, so I should know a bit, and I want to be a cardiologist, so I should know a bit more. <laughs> I've done cardiac placement, and I get grilled, so I should know a bit better. The more you do it, the more good you'll get at it. There's no, there's no equation, no one's, you know, some people are better at retaining information, some people require less times, whatever. That's fine, but it's all on you. If you understand what you're, what you're studying, you'll be fine. Uh, I'll go for murmurs as well, I've got a really good remembering it as well. So yeah, um, just chill. Complete heart block literally does what it says on the tin. It is a complete blockade of the heart. There is no AV conduction, there is a complete dissociation. Therefore, the independent atrial and ventricular rates. So, the P's and Q's do not agree. What is a ventricular rate is the rate at which the ventricles contract, correct? So yeah, just literally make sense of it. Then you'll never have to worry about all these picky little, you know, like these these keywords. These keywords will make sense to you. You will think of the keyword. If you're thinking, right, the atria and ventricles have dissociated, what would you say? The atria and ventricles have dissociated, what would you call that? Um, <coughs> uh, AV wow! You would call it atrial ventricular dissociation. I wonder how. Pathophysiology, right. Essentially the end point of Mobus 1 or Mobus 2. It progresses from Mobus 1 to Mobus 2. Progressive fatigue of the avian nervous cells of Mobus 1. So, you know, like the, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I get bumper clotted. Or alternatively, there can be a sudden onset of complex, you just go, and then once you go, um, all the P and Q waves get kind of messed up and tapped in the head. So, yeah. Um, uh, it's called a triversicular block. Triversicular block being the presence of a conduction delay in the free fascicles of the, below the AV node, the right bundle branch, the left anterior fascicle, and the right posterior fascicle. You mean left? Sorry, left posterior fascicle, not the right posterior fascicle. Right bundle branch, left anterior fascicle, left posterior fascicle. I don't know why I said right. Uh, manifesting as a biversicular, so both fascicles block a third degree atrioventricular block. So it's third degree plus RBBV and LAFB, or third degree plus RBBV plus LPVFB. Yeah, I don't think we need to know much about fascicular block, but yeah, other than that, like it's it, it's that. Causes of complete heart block, yeah, yeah, inferior. So what are your inferior um, leads? Two. Three, and ABF. Huh? Mummy, I've forgotten it. I'll teach you Lily's Hub. Do you want me to teach you Lily's Hub? Yeah, I was going to ask. Okay. So simple. Lateral. So L, I, I. Um, L. So L, I, I. Um, L. I'm okay. I'm okay here. Which one I'm gonna go? So yeah, basically that's Lily, and then S S A A L L. Okay. So these two are anteroceptal, so that's technically septal. V one and V two are septal. 
then v3, v4 are anterior, then v5 and v6 are lateral. So you've got L, I, I, L, I, S, S, A, A, L, L, or S, A, 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 L, L. For the anterior receptor, there's a bit of overlap. But yeah, do you get me? Do you understand? Yeah, I just need to memorize it. L, I, 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 L, nothing. So that's Li, 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 S, S, A, A, L, L, Li, Li, Sa. Okay. Yeah, that's it. A, we you know the blocking drugs, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, the junction, you have a picture generation, the capacity center, so left disease or triphysical block. And that is your heart blocks done.